Hello ladies and gentlemen, Slice Heart Shot here, and in this episode I will be going after Whitetail Deer with Buckshot and 9 o'clock Moose with the bow. So uh did want to start up the episode before uh, I actually got a little bit of action. So I got a buck headed towards me, and yes, I did buy the, the uh, tripod. So I thought I'd check that out uh, during uh, for the first time during this episode. Now I did set the tripod out on a couple uh, bear bait on a bear bait that I got um, in Red Feather Falls, and uh, I went and got it because um, I was actually talking to uh, one of my subscribers, and he asked me to do the nine o'clock moose one tonight. So. Uh, much obliged I would be more than happy to do a bow hunt on its moose and uh, maybe blast a couple white tails with a shotgun so hopefully it's interesting and uh, this is probably gonna be a pretty long episode so I do have a um, couple topics to talk about that we'll get to in a minute and hopefully you guys stick with me I'm going to put a little bit of the sun eliminator. Now I do have the wind in my favor right now. It's blowing left to right. But uh, hey, why not You know, use some scent eliminator. That way I don't have to worry too much about it. Now my goal in this episode, yeah, shoot a couple white tail hopefully with the shotgun. But um, I'd really like to get a nice respectable moose with this python bow. I have not done that yet. So that that is going to be um, one of my priorities in this video now uh, I did start in the afternoon hopefully to get some nice uh, sunny video um, I absolutely love hunting in nice weather in in this game I mean this game just looks absolutely gorgeous with the the sunshine and the wind blowing and the shadows uh, it gets a little repetitive at hunting at 5 in the morning to where you know like it's always just foggy you know I kind of find myself in that rut Oop, he just called back right there hopefully he's getting closer he is he should be here pretty soon now I have not laid eyes on this buck yet so um, when I see him that's gonna be when you guys see him for the first time Let's see if I can take a peek at him so far now I apologize if uh, you hear me breathing into the mic or I'm not really sure if that's happening or not or if you hear me kind of blow into the mic every now and then. Um, yeah, that's just the way. Oh, is that him right there? <sighs> Look at what we have here, ladies and gentlemen. A piebald buck. Now, I almost do not want to shoot this buck. Oh, he's a nice one, too. I just cannot shoot this buck with this shotgun. I need to. <laughs> I got to take this buck with a bow. Oh, I don't know. Oh, jeez. Let's try to get some nice footage. How beautiful is he? Now, piebald is what you obviously call it. It's not an all-white deer. It's not an all-brown deer. It's a mix, and I have not shot a piebald buck yet, and I don't think he's going to put me up in the rankings as far as rack size, so I think I'm going to take this buck with a bow. Uh, yeah, I think uh, respectfully enough, that's what I do, I'm a bow hunter. And I just cannot see me shooting this buck. But let's make sure we got the. Uh, I want to definitely put a Luminoc in him. I don't know. I just don't like that quartering two shot right there. Hopefully he might veer off just a little bit. Give me a broadside shot. I hope he doesn't spot me. Wow, if 
he runs off, folks, I'm definitely uh, going to be on his trail. He's kind of not liking the situation, it looks like, a little bit. I'm not too sure how Whitetail respond to the tripod. Um, you know, in reality, I would have been done sitting here in this field with this popped up like this. All right, let's focus on the shot, folks. Like in real life, we're going to pick our spot. We ain't even going to look at the... Oh, he's hit pretty good, I think. Yeah, he's hurt pretty good. I don't think he's making it over that hill. Come, nope. Yes! Sweet! Piebald buck, ladies and gentlemen. Alright. Go ahead and get down from here. All right. All right. First animal of the the evening, and uh, wow, what a special one! I have not gotten a pie ball. I've gotten uh, three albino deer so far. One albino doe. A really nice. I believe he's a 155 inch. Uh, 155 inch albino and then I just got that albino buck uh, probably a couple weeks ago which was pretty awesome but I didn't get no commentary on that one intestine I don't know <laughs> this is a little bit more react I mean I understand that he was quartered towards me and it you know angled back but I would have definitely hit one lung in the liver if that was the case and it was uh, going back into uh, the intestines alright let's go ahead and stand up and get our eyes on this guy I'd really like to hear a nice moose Sweet. Did I bring the camera? I believe I did. Oh, I did not. I had to make room for the... Alright. Yeah, I was definitely... Well, you know, it was liver. You know, lately, I don't know what's going on. Um, the hand hasn't been showing up on the uh, antlers for some reason. Which is like I don't have enough trouble as it is taking picture of animals. Oh, he seems like he's a little stiff, like rigor mortis is already setting in. <laughs> Alright, hang on. I want to get a nice picture of this guy, folks. I Ah, why won't you grab his antlers? They go down just a little bit. Alright, I can accept that right there. It's got all of his points in the picture. That's a one, two, three, four, five, six. Nice twelve pointer. Sweet. I didn't even see uh <laughs> how many what he scored. I'll I'll check that later. Um I'm still having problem with my gallery whoa that was a moose ro roaming that way I don't know how long ago but alright alright well now that we got a little bit of time maybe uh, we'll do some searching around well I got a topic to talk to you guys about and uh, it's about you know should a beginner maybe go with the compound bow or the more traditional recurve bow or long bow 
um, the pr traditional style. Oh, that might be that doe right there. Let me take a look at her real quick. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things that factor into that question, to be honest with you. Um, the number one thing, really, is how novice are you when it comes to bows? Uh, recurve bow definitely takes dedication, practice. Um, I mean, there's just, you got to make sure that you're, you're hitting that that spot every time you pull that bow back to your cheek you know to the corner of your mouth you're hitting that spot every time that you get so comfortable with it that um, it just it just comes naturally to you um, the other things are you know I mean if you have good you know hand-eye coordination and you know you you pick up on things really well you know early um, you know recurves not a bad you know not bad you know if you decided to go that route but I probably wouldn't expect to hunt with it the same year that you bought it you know you want to take that year to really familiarize yourself with or make any you know changes that you might need to make to be consistent on target uh, with at least five. Oh, I missed that. What was that? Was that a sound? I don't know, but uh, if it was a female moose, I'm not too worried about. It. I'm really looking for a nice ball. But um, until you can consistently shoot out. To 25 yards not 20 you know that's gonna be your ideal 20 to inside 20 is is definitely where you're gonna want to keep it that first year but I'm um, practicing you're gonna want to keep it at least to 25 yards that way you can make 20 yard shot chip shots you know you're so comfortable at 25 30 yards that 20 yards would just come naturally to you um, you want at least five six inch groups with a with a recurve check this out uh, with a recurve bow um, before you really want to step out into the woods and another thing I mean that just takes into factor is what type of hunting are you going to be doing um, if it's going to be you know kind of stalking you know ground stalks sitting behind trees or you know kneeling down behind a, a you know a overturned tree or something using the roots as kind of like your natural ground you know maybe even um, building your own natural ground blinds you're not going to be doing a lot of tree sitting uh, a recurve is would definitely um, give you a better advantage granted that you took the time to familiar yourself with that bow now um, if you're going to be doing a lot of tree stand and you got to remember also you know if you're a novice at the at the sport uh, you want to try to do compound first compound is easier as is as in like it will train you how to shoot a bow easier and more efficiently and more consistently because it has that backstop for you backstop meaning that when you draw that bow it's going to break you know right there at the end oh i got another buck ladies and gentlemen all right he's over that way let's uh let's go ahead and set this i hope he's not too close we'll go ahead and set this right right here Uh, compound will help you take away some of those errors you know that that you're gonna have I mean there's not gonna be any getting by it um, you're gonna have mistakes and, and things of that nature uh, starting off shooting bows 
um, you're probably going to get frustrated because you can't keep, you know, consistent arrows going into, uh, you know, consistent areas on your target. So, I mean, there's a, you know, like I'm saying, there's a few factors that definitely come into play. Um, ideally, being a novice, you're going to want to sit in a tree, you know, in between bedding and feeding areas, uh, travel corridors, funnels. Let me see if I can't point out a funnel to you guys on... Funnels are a whole different subject uh, topic, but we are in the best place right now to actually talk about funnels. Now, if we was at the main menu, it'd be a little bit closer here, but let me give you an idea, okay? Now, most likely, you know, like uh, this island out here, you know, there'll be deer on that island. So what you want to think about funnels, obviously, it sounds easy, but there's lots of land out there that you got to try to figure out. This is the easy one. Well, not really in this area because you don't know where, what travel corridors these animals are taking to get to these certain islands. You know, they could obviously cross here, here, down here. You know, all this is shallow, so there's nothing really stopping them. But when you get into the deeper waters, you know, deer are not going to purposely you know cross this deep water down to here when they know they can just take this route you know come through here come down you know that it, it's no difference to them they'd rather take the easier route so a funnel is anywhere a pinch point is most likely going to uh, funnel a deer in that area now when it's, let's say you got two fields you know connecting each other We'll go over here. This one will be a little bit. I don't want to bother you, or you know. I hope you guys know what I'm talking about. Now, two fields. See, like here, you got a field here, and you got a field up north, and then you got a patch of woods connecting these two. Now, this is what you're gonna call a travel corridor, a funnel. Them bucks are not gonna want to put themselves out into. Um, you know open area unless it's like coming into light or going into dark anytime during the day they want to move to point A to point B they're gonna use this type of funnel and it's gonna if you set a tree stand inside here that's gonna give you that advantage because they're gonna want to stay hidden they're gonna stay in cover and they're gonna you know maybe if they come down here maybe bed down here and then when they get up they'll come up this way and hit this field you know up here uh, um, you know whatever they're not on you know in the summertime they do get on pretty good exact schedules but during hunting season they start breaking that up weekly like one week they'll take this travel corridor next week they'll take this travel corridor week after that they could be bedding up here taking different routes you know you got to try to stay on top of them but to get back what i was talking about um if you're a ground hunter you're gonna have to use well not have to I don't want to say that because I've I've killed only two deer on the ground I mean animals are tough to kill on the ground I mean they are just like like I've said in other episodes they're built to survive they you know they're not stupid they're they know what predatory is they know what you know what's at stake if they make you know too many mistakes and things of that nature so Oh, there's that buck right there. Let's take a look at him real quick. Oh, wouldn't that be something if he was albino? Whoa, he disappeared in the grass. Oh, there he is. Wow, he's kind of a nice one. All right, getting some, uh, getting some all right bucks around. I'm definitely I'm gonna shoot him with a shotgun. Um, I haven't heard no moose, so I don't think I'm gonna scare any moose off. But um, <clears throat> while we're waiting for him to come in, I'll get back to what I'm talking about here. Um, it's rarely ever uh, that you're going to spot an animal before an animal spots you. Now, the advantage of a recurve, what that's going to do is, you might spot each other at the same time. You might spot him only a few seconds after he spotted you. And 
they don't just spot you and then just like boom take off out of there you know uh, sometimes they do I don't want to say they don't I mean sometimes they do but most of the time they kind of want to see what you're doing for a minute you know like they don't want to just make a snap decision and just take off out of there because it kind of leaves them curious they're kind of like cats you know curiosity killed the cat sometimes uh, they'll look at you and then you're looking at them you make that eye contact you know you only got a few seconds I mean they're not gonna give you a minute most likely if they can actually see you they're not gonna give you that kind of time so that's where a recurve comes into action is where you can instinctively just pull that bow back up to your cheek you got that same anchor point every single time you're practiced with it you know you feel you don't have no sight you know you just snap shoot whack once your fingers hit that hit that cheek in that spot and you center that that bow down where you want that arrow to go where your eyes are pointing you know you're gonna let it go now with a compound that's not the story you're gonna have to draw it back it breaks look through your peep sight down your sight center the sight and then hit your trigger which you still need that anchor point somewhere on your cheek you know at the same spot every time so as you can see which one's gonna be faster and which one's gonna take a few more seconds which ultimately can cost you more animals but then again recurves oh I don't want to use that recurves on the other hand they'll uh you'll kind of miss a little bit more you know boom he's down all right blasted him whoa do we got another one I wonder if he uh probably heard that shot that you know I love the bow um in this game I mean it really it's my favorite but the reason I don't gun hunt more in here is because I just don't like the fact that like boom I just made that big blast and <laughs> I got a feeling I'm gonna have to walk a quarter mile now if not a mile before I even hear another animal so <clears throat> that's kind of the general idea now <clears throat> you know I I get asked quite often um, you know okay now that I've established what kind of hunting I'm gonna be doing it's gonna be mostly tree stand you know which I recommend if you're starting off you're gonna wanna get high you know get up in a tree stand get above them um, not only does that kinda blow your scent you know over top of them when they get close enough to you know start smelling um, the area really well uh, you want to be above them you know a lot of times your your scent will blow over top of them top of them that then you got to get into thermals which is a whole nother topic we'll talk about that too but uh, you want to get above them compound bow they're more accurate uh, they're faster um, animals tend to jump the string if you ever heard that that phrase before and uh, what that is is obviously you know you pull back you know you draw and when you let that when you let that bow go believe it or not it's it's fast but animals that snapping sound you know when you ever get scared you do that really quick fast jump well animals like deer have the capability by the time that arrow even though it shoots at 300 feet per second 260 feet per second that deer can drop from the top of his back to the bottom of his belly if you just take that frame the top of his back will be where to the bottom of his belly was within a second he jumps down and then springs that first jump and what a lot of the times that happens when you set that arrow 
let's say on a couple lungs like right there say those couple lungs and you pull that you you pull your uh, release your trigger that deer could duck that arrow sometimes depending on what kind of mood they're in if they come in really alert looking around ears perking waving all over the place tail you know kind of whipping back and forth and they just look like they're on crack you know that's most likely gonna happen you know but then you want to take the chance do I want to aim underneath the belly like say the grass is the deer do you want to aim under the belly thinking that he's gonna drop down and he'll drop down into the arrow do you want to take that chance because if he doesn't jump down guess what you just shot underneath that buck and or that deer and you missed so that has to come into play too with a recurve they jump the arrow a lot <laughs> that's why you don't I mean that's what it's not you don't want to shoot out past 20 yards with a recurve not for the fact that it's not going to get good penetration it's for the fact is them deer are going to be able to do a break dance out there by the time that arrow gets to them anything past 25 you know they're going to have all the time in the world and that's going to result in a lot more uh, bad shots hit them high you know uh, hit them up in their um, back straps or their top of their shoulder blade the way they kind of bound down or you know things of that nature and you definitely you know as a ethical hunter don't want to be doing that so I mean there's just a lot of things that kind of come into play um, but I think I got off subject when I say um, some people ask me well what brand or how much should I spend on a compound bow um, now there is brands that you can be like well I'll shoot Hoyt or I'll shoot Fred Bear or I'll shoot Bowtech or I'll shoot uh, Matthews bows only you know some people get into that rhythm which is fine because there is all different kinds of bows that each company makes you know if you want to stay with that kind of style and they do have their own kind of styles but that's where you have to find out you cannot ask somebody else what kind of bow what name of a bow or what kind of bow they should uh, be purchasing what brand name um, it's all about the feel you know if you got enough money to spend on a really nice bow but you don't know what brand to get that's where you just let the bow pick you um, you want to go to an outfitter or you know like uh, some place Cabela's Gander Mountain um, whatever country you're in your bow shop your your local bow shop and you want to shoot as many bows as they will let you shoot um, in that facility so you can feel which one because I'm gonna tell you all bows shoot somewhat different some have a smoother draw, some have a, a more solid backstop, some of them break a little bit easier at the end of the draw, uh, some of them are lighter, heavier, um, some work well, I mean the list goes on and on. So you, you would like for you, that bow to pick you, you know, that one that you feel most comfortable with shooting. Now when you're on a budget, you can't really do that. Um, let's go ahead and uh, get done before we get into that. Well, when you're on a budget, obviously, <laughs> you know, well, hey, this $800 bow, $700 bow, even nine nowadays, it's 2013, uh, they're coming out with some $900 bows. This bow picked me. <laughs> well, that's great when you only got three, four hundred dollars. What are you going to do? Uh, so, basically, let your outfitter help you with that, too. What is that? Wow, I picked up. Okay. Blast some 113. Not bad. Wow, he took some bullets, didn't he? Head down. 
Man, what's with these deer getting all stiff? Holy smokes. He got smacked right there in the throat, didn't he? Right in his white patch. Hope the dermatologist could do something about that. Like to prop his head up on the On, on bucks man I think that looks so cool my uh, two favorite is uh, drop tine I absolutely love the way bucks look when they got a big old drop tine or a drop tine coming off one of their antlers or even both their antlers um, that's even my goal in real life is to shoot me a nice drop tine buck um, 15 years and I still yet to even see one so <laughs> good luck with that right guys but uh, I'm gonna keep trying. <laughs> it's not like I'll stop. But um, what was I talking about earlier? Maybe that's why I should. Oh yeah, when you're on a budget, um, basically let your outfitter help you out with that too. You know, if you decide to pick up the sport, uh, if you guys are seeing the running, uh, the theme here is shoot bows before you buy don't just be like wow that bow looks awesome I'm gonna buy that one no don't do that um, go to your outfitter let them know you know got 300 400 or you know how, how much money you got see if you can look you know at some bows and, and shoot a couple bows in that kind of bracket Wow okay so here we go we got another buck let's uh... let's go down here and set up the tree stand sure would be nice to hear some moose we're in moose country what's going on here let's uh... set up the tree stand let's get him on the way real fast hey how awesome was that piebald buck huh guys wow i'm still stoked about that Yeah, the running theme, you know, try to shoot the bow. But, and that's all I could tell you. If you're on a budget, don't worry so much about the brand. Uh, the brand could mean diddly squat, you know. I've, I've shot bows that I've never even heard of before. I mean, I have, to be honest with you, I haven't heard of a, I've heard of Parker bows, but wow, I haven't heard about them since the 90s. So they they really kind of surprised me here jumping in on the sponsorship with the with the hunter. Um, I've seen going gone into pawn shops and seen old Parker bow or something like that maybe hanging up on the rack. Uh, not too familiar with Parker bows. Um, basically, all the main names out there nowadays uh, are the Matthews, Hoyts, uh, Bowtex and uh you know things of that nature so and fred bear you know um those kind of bows and stuff but you know don't worry about the brand if you're on a budget um the one that's keep winning all the championships the bow championships is matthews uh, matthew bows technically they're the ones who invented the single cam bow and it's not really probably what you think um, you see like on this bow it definitely has two cams those are those round things now the bottom one let's see if I can get you a I'm not gonna be able to it doesn't show us that bottom cam um, yeah he's hiding it with his elbow but uh, you see how the top one's round they don't they're, a single cam is what they consider a cam is it has to have some kind of oval shape to it it has to assist with how 
oh, I can't I can't explain it but the bottom one will look oval somewhat like a um, kind of like an egg and when the, when the string gets pulled back you know that it rotates and it comes around and then let's go now back in the day before a lot of these companies were doing single cam both cams would look oval and you know they were nice and everything like that but single cam really has revolutionized uh, the bows this is a single cam bow what we're holding here they don't consider that top one uh, um, an effective cam so single cam is nice oh wow look at that buck Whoa, look at the rack on him, guys. Jeez, what a nice one. Wow, we got some nice bucks around the area. It's a shame I'm blasting them with the shotgun. <laughs> I like shooting them with the... Wow, he's a dandy, folks. Look at him. He is just gorgeous. We'll just blast him right there. <laughs> That's a... Anti-hunters could never figure that one out, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you, they will be like, look at you guys. You guys sit here and be like, look how gorgeous that animal is. Boom, you know? But that's that's the whole story, though, is there wasn't, uh, there wasn't animals like this back in in 1800 we're breaking records every year on how big animals are that are being shot uh, ladies and gentlemen you know why because we keep their numbers down and when you keep their numbers down, look at that shot I mean how many vitals did that hit geez but uh, by keeping their numbers down to where they don't overpopulate and regulation not only that uh, 158 nice nice buck but uh, regulated too to where everybody's just not out there blasting deer 24-7, 365 days a year. Oh, what, did, what position did that give me? Position 21. Wow, they got some nice bucks out there right now. But uh, yeah, probably 180s and 190s. What am I talking about? Oh, come on, get out of there. I want a picture of you. You're a nice one. Er. Oh, I'm gonna try to move him out. See if I can move him out of here. Come on, deer. Don't give me no crap. There we go. Let's move him up in the sunshine a little bit. There we go. This probably won't show up too well on uh, in my gallery. You know what? Oop, I'm gonna do this. There we go. Oh, looks like it's grabbing the antlers a little bit better. Good enough. All right. Well, I just blasted with another shotgun. Let's just keep heading out this way. See if we can't hear some moose. Oh, well, and another really important thing is to uh, um, check your, your local laws. Ladies, I don't care what country you're in, uh, whatever. If, if they allow bow hunting, make sure you read up on your laws. You don't want to get your bow and everything that you just paid for confiscated, taken away. We had some moose out this way, but they're probably run off by now. But uh, check your local laws for things like if you plan on doing bow hunting, what uh, what's the minimum poundage you can use? Now I'm not sure. And oh, by the way, the guy who actually brought all this up is this renegade for life. He's been asking me. He said actually because of my videos, which would be pretty freaking awesome if I could help some people get out there and do some bow hunting because it really is exciting but he said that he wants to get into bow hunting because of the way I talk about it and let me just tell you right now if you are able where you're at 
to get into bow hunting and you're not extremely poor uh do it i cannot even stress to you enough i mean how amazing it is if there's a place that you can go yearly and bow hunt even if you got to be a weekend warrior one week out of the year you know go with a couple buddies or find a couple people in you know your area to go with and that you can be friends with do it there's no other experiences ever like it uh, friendship bonding um, the excitement of not just killing the animals being there you know enjoying nature um, being part of the conservation you are a conservationist when you start participating in hunting um, situations don't let anybody ever tell you anything different we do more than any anti-hunter out there I don't care they're not the ones out there spending billions here in the state alone billions of dollars are hunters contributing for the natural uh, wildlife habitat that these animals can keep and endure and thrive and you know just live and uh, you know I, I hate when they sit there and spill out oh you guys don't ever buy any baloney what are you talking about Wisconsin uh, state of Wisconsin here in the United States of America purchases so much public hunting land uh, with our money that we contributed to uh, you know funds we hire more people people have jobs um, you know game warden officers uh, people who work at the Department of Natural Resources the list goes on and on we're, we're a community we, we we support each other and we feed our families with pure natural protein no fat no preservatives no steroids that these guys want to keep pumping into these animals these farm animals and then selling it to us just to make them fatter so they can sell them more by the pound I mean are you kidding me um, <laughs> I mean not that I don't eat that I don't eat that because you know I don't get a deer every year you know I try <laughs> with a bow it's tough you know it's not like gun hunting where you just get to go out there and shoot deer 300 yards away you know it'd be a different story but I don't really like doing that I mean that's my prerogative I don't get out on the people who do gun hunt or anything like that I just uh, I just don't so and I'll be darned if that didn't look like a bear right there on the edge of that water right there Sure be nice to hear a moose. Jeez, I haven't even heard a cow moose. But uh, we're the conservationists to make sure that these animals have places to live. And they don't understand. They think, oh, just because this year maybe we didn't buy no land. You know, oh, we're just not doing our job. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You know how much it costs to preserve the land that the state DNR and, and you know across this country how much it costs to just uh, maintain I mean come on man well that looks like a is that moving but um yeah they just don't get it folks uh, that looks like something moving in that water or in them reeds. Maybe it's just a... Uh, I don't know. Oh, let's see. But, um... Yeah. What they, what they spend their money on... And you get these ads on TV. Uh, all the time. Oh, you know, the poor little sad dog. And the poor little kitten. You know, the cat, the domesticated animal. Sitting there looking up at you with these sad eyes. And they're going, oh, these poor abused animals, you know, they need money. And of course people, 
you know they're like oh man that's sad you know I'm gonna give some money to that but what they don't realize is that those people are the same they're going these animals they're not saying these dogs and cats they're saying these animals so even people who support hunting and believe in it that the numbers I mean that they just taste absolutely wonderful and uh, they're good for you you know and and that's why they're actually put here on earth I mean ladies and gentlemen nobody would be here today if it wasn't for hunting okay that is something in the water right there I think it's a cow moose yeah uh, nobody would be here today if it wasn't for um, hunting and, and feeding families we didn't grow up or we didn't thrive in our, our early ancestor days nobody did on vegetables I guarantee you that so um, I mean these guys have just lost it dude I mean they're oh well you don't need to do it no more it's so cruel no do you know what cruel is letting these animals is, is building these malls and streets and highways and houses and suburbia and these are the same people that live in the suburbs and and I'm not knocking it whoa that sounds like a big old moose cool we'll get up here on this uh, hill over here set up a tripod do some I got some moose spray with me too I think we could bring them across that water but uh yeah they live in these suburb houses houses just stacked next to each other they're hitting up their malls every day and they're hitting up uh, their fast food restaurant joints you know these these people ain't out there living with the animals I don't know what they're thinking as far as we don't have to keep their numbers down they only got so much habitat what would you like them to do just keep multiplying and multiplying to where they just not enough food for them and then there's just so many of them that they're fighting for the food and then they're starving have you ever seen an animal starve to death <laughs> it is the most sad thing that you could ever witness in the animal kingdom is an animal starving to death they don't just go you know it's like all of a sudden oh I'm they're too hungry and die no <laughs> they go as far as their rib cages are nothing but skin they're freezing to death because they didn't get enough food for the winter oh there's that moose right there guys let's take a look at him might be a little one I'm not sure not bad let's arrow him alright here we go uh, we're gonna do that's white tail we're gonna lay out some moose scent then we're gonna call to him we're gonna go over here and call to him get his attention now I'm gonna look for a nice ambush spot we're gonna just lay this down right here let's really get them interested and then we're gonna go oh no well, I don't know why not we crawl for a minute let's get back to uh, why we hunt and you know I don't know if you guys know who Ted Nugent is but if you do if you don't his name's Ted Nugent He's the one who sings in that band Cat Scratch Fever. Uh, he's got the song Fred Bear. Um, wonderful songs and this and that. Uh, the guy truly puts anti-hunters in their place daily. I mean, he just can't fathom the dumbness that these people have on what it actually reality is out here in the real world as far as hunting goes. Um... <laughs> I mean these people have lost it all the money that they get like I was talking about like oh yeah I didn't want to go too far off subject but uh 
yeah these anti hunters they'll put those commercials out and you're you're feeling bad for the dog and cat you know so you're like oh I want to get some money 80 percent of that money that gets donated only 20 percent actually goes to the animal shelters for domesticated animals that get kicked out of our house lost whatever whatnot and they're dropping them animals like crazy as far as uh, euthanizing and a shot you know put them to sleep things of that nature um, because there's just too many of them now 80 percent goes to court cost and fighting people f from getting into uh, you know like starting up hunts trying to uh, suppress them like bear hunts in Michigan they spent 300 million dollars on this court cost trying to stop bear hunting in Michigan when bears are actually going into people's backyards and killing their kids and, and their dogs and their cats and stuff these people still say no you can't go out there and hunt these bears it's cruel <laughs> well uh, how about a bear running into your backyard and snatching up your kid playing soccer ball? Uh, you want to talk to me about cruel? I mean, come on, man. Oh, that's that female moose way behind me. Alright, let's go ahead and set up. I think we can try to lay eyes on this moose. But, uh... And another thing, you know, I mean, they, they pay for all that, like, a dove hunt in Wisconsin. Oh, my God, they've tried to stop dove hunting so bad in Wisconsin, trying to say that they're, um, they mate for life and, and uh, you know, all this and that and how cruel it is and stuff. Did you know Mexico has, like, 365 days now believe it or not don't think that Mexico is like the wild wild west when it comes to hunting you can just go down there and kill whatever you want whenever you want or anything. no they got seasons and stuff too it's a big business down there in Mexico and it's wonderful hunting um here comes that moose ladies and gentlemen just checking it out hope you don't spot us but, uh, yeah, they have more doves down there in Mexico than anywhere else in the world, I think. Like Argentina or something like that. You know, I've heard a lot of, you know, oh, where's he going? What's he doing? Is he going around? Keeps walking into stuff. He's having a hard time getting up here. He had to stop right there behind that tree, didn't he? If I had the crossbow, man, I'd smack him down but we're doing the compound bow but um yeah just uh crap kind of forgot what I was talking about um wow I just keep changing subjects like I just can't there's so much to talk about when it comes to them stupid people but uh yeah, I'm not sure if you guys ever ate wild game. Oh my god, it's amazing. <laughs> I love it, man. I mean, my favorite dish is back straps and, and, and fried potatoes and onions and garlic and, man, maybe some wild rice or something, you know, oh, with some uh, mushrooms in that wild rice and, and things of that nature. Oh, jeez. I think we're gonna smack him down with a regular arrow. He's he's just for fun. Whoa, he's right there, guys. <laughs> Talk about in your face action. Okay, okay. Let's uh let's try to do this. Oh, 
Nice hit. I don't think he's going far. I hope not. Put it right behind his shoulder. Okay, he laid down. Oop, don't want to do that. But yeah, um... So, you know, we talked about bows. Um, you know, kudos, man. I'm so happy that somebody, like, you know... Yeah, we got a nice long heart shot on him. He's not going nowhere. Uh, really, a pre you know, somebody's like, oh, wow, you know, bow hunting sounds so awesome. It is. Ladies and I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's boring as hell most of the time. <laughs> I mean, you're sitting there, a few hours, tree stands, you know, and it's so frustrating a lot of times, all of a sudden you finally get that animal coming in or moving in, and something just stupid happens, or something goes wrong, or sometimes you don't even know what happened went wrong, the deer just fled, you know, got out of there for some apparent reason, and, uh, you know, but it's exciting being part of that you know nature and just what you know humans have done for thousands hundreds of thousands of years for as far as we can tell we've depended on these hooved four-legged creatures just delicious creatures look at that arrow placement Right there, guys. That's that's not bad. Not bad at all. One twenty-seven. My new result is position five in nine o'clock moose. Don't have many moose pictures. Oh, I know it's a. The antlers. Swing his butt down. He's smiling at us, folks. Just like you see at the. Oh, that's not bad right there. Let's try to get his. Now we just need this one's daddy. But he had horns, so let's keep going. You guys probably remembered what I was talking about earlier, but I can't for the life of me remember what I was talking about. Um, yeah, so I was just saying earlier about those commercials that they put out there. Don't fall for them. If you guys want to donate money to your local shelter, animal shelters, be my guest, you know I mean? But do the deliveries personally, or, you know, don't call them 800 numbers, because they're just they're not standing up for what you think that they're standing up for they're they're sly they're sneaky if they came right out and came on TV and said donate to us because uh, we're gonna stop people from hunting they wouldn't make shit people would be like are you stupid we need hunting I've had my uncle shot a deer last year and it was delicious <laughs> you know but no they don't do that they try to trick you they try to be like, oh, look at this poor dog. He's been beaten his whole life. You know, he needs he needs food and water. And people are like, oh, shit, you know, I'm going to give some money out to that. Because I feel sorry for that animal, which is, you know, great. I would, too. I do, too. I don't want to see people beating on their dogs and cats and being, being torturous and cruel to animal teas and stuff like that. What we're doing here is not cruel. This is... It's it's life. It's what's been bred in us since day one, as far as we can tell. It's your natural survival instinct. Just because they get clouded with their... Oh, yeah, I was talking about... Uh, whoa, there's like a moose behind me. I think it's a cow, though. But, uh... Yeah, they, well, I was talking about with the... the the malls and the suburbs and the the best buys and everything you know they don't oppose to that they don't oppose that we build another strip mall on the outskirts of town 
they don't oppose to building highways through areas like this that we have to chop down trees and, and plow dirt and landscape and everything else and well guess what <laughs> they're just contributing to the taking away the environment now I support building strip malls and you know things of that nature too it keeps people working it keeps people lives going but I don't try to stop it for a raccoon you know that there's hundreds of millions and maybe even a billion of them suckers here in the states alone you think I'm worried about a few raccoons no because guess what my hunting license and my me buying arrows and and buying camouflage and bows and uh, broadheads and and calls and and all scents and everything else that's gonna contribute so his or him cousins that live in the rest of the world still have a place to go to be there's places that we've you know we have in America that never ever ever can ever be commercialized no strip mall no uh, no road no no lodge no house can ever be built on that land ever as long as the United States government is still in charge of the United States it's not gonna happen so and and plus there's just so many other reasons we keep the numbers we know how many we kill we got great great estimates on how many animals are in certain areas uh, we're doing it right folks um, each year we're, they're killing 300,000 deer in Wisconsin whoa that was a doe it looked like she kind of busted me right away gotta kind of be careful on that but um yeah so we we know what we're doing these anti-hunters are just dumb people out there who don't realize that they just think la di da we're just going out here blasting every animal that we can see Wisconsin kills consistently 300,000 animal uh, deer alone every year and their numbers are still in the four to five million mark uh, every year because they're obviously gonna breed they're gonna have fawns they're gonna You know they're gonna procreate one of the things that Ted Nugent actually says is it's the most natural renewable resource in the world can you argue with that I don't think so we can pump billions and trillions of gallons of oil out of this earth with no remorse with just more greed and feed give me more oil but <laughs> did you think that shit's replenishing itself that fast no no we're talking millions of years of this oil being created under the earth and we're sucking it up yearly like no it's not gonna happen uh deer on the other hand we can kill a billion of them a year in the United States of America across this country and guess what next year there will be a billion and one more and it feeds families hunger for I'm part of the have uh, hunting for the hungry um, if I get more than one deer whoa 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 that's a deer right there Is that a buck or a doe? I think it's a doe. She looks like a swamp doe, like she's been in the swamp. She's like real brown. Yeah. Whoa, there's something else walking.
I just know there is. The other one started trotting off before this one. Whoa, what do we got over there? Another doe. She's kind of pissed too. Maybe I need to slow it down a little bit. But yeah, I don't know. They they get me upset when I, even when I talk about them. They're just so ignorant. They don't even realize. They just want to stop everything that we've created. Uh, you know, there's more deer now in this day and age than there ever has been. So I don't know where they're are. I mean, the only thing they're arguing, oh, these they shouldn't have to just die. <laughs> well, well, guess what? Um, I'm a carnivore, born a carnivore, will always be a carnivore. I'm not going to deny my heritage. It's like telling uh, somebody they shouldn't be a race that they're being, that they are. Uh, that's ridiculous. Um, why would you try to take something that they've been, been since day one and just say that, oh, that's wrong? Because you're a different race or you're this race. Wow, another doe. She could take off any second. Get out of here. Really? You're just going to let me walk right on by you, huh? But, uh... Yeah. You know, fuck... Oh, she come back my way. You know, folks, uh... We have them four sharp teeth in our mouths for a reason. And it wasn't because we grew up or, you know, we were, when we uh, were, wherever we came from on this planet, we weren't here made to eat vegetables only, I know that. So, they can go stick it. But yeah, kudos to that renegade there. To uh, renegade for life, man. Good, good luck. I talked to him about, gave him a little bit of tips on, uh, you know, on how to choose the right uh, equipment for him and uh, hopefully it works out for him and uh, it's the best of luck to him you know I mean I just I absolutely love the taste of venison and uh, elk venison uh, you know wild game in general ducks pheasants um, it's wonderful. It's not only wonderful chasing after them and actually, you know, giving them a chance, you know, to win, which they do. They win out in the field 99% of the time, <laughs> it seems like. But, you know, uh, yeah, I never not understood that either. As far as, like, somebody sitting there taking a big old bite of a juicy cheeseburger grease dripping down their their chin trying to tell somebody else that it's just not right them going out there and shooting them deer and stuff and you just kind of look at them like are you serious <laughs> that that cow you're manhandling right now had no chance <laughs> he got pushed into a room with a metal cage and got his throat slit until he bled out. And then they hacked him up and ground him up and made, made him into that burger you're eating right now. The animals I'm chasing actually have thousands of thousands of acres they can run from me to and, and never come out during the daytime. And just all sorts. They're built with sense of smell that can tell you what you ate for breakfast yesterday uh, sh eyes so sharp they can pick you off blinking too much if they're looking at you uh, ears so funneled that they can hear just the sound and I'm going to show you wait a minute what was that What was that? Is that that doe behind me? Yeah, it came from over there. That's her. Um, I'm just going to circle around and see if we can't hear nothing in here. I usually hear a lot more moose. I'm not hearing any moose. Maybe mornings are best for moose. I'm not sure. 
but uh yeah ears cup so hard that they can swivel them in independently so they can exactly pinpoint exactly where a sound came from if you're sitting in a tree stand and it's one of those nights one of those evenings before dark that is just so dead still that even when you pull your bow back like this listen they look right into your eyes when you do that on them quiet evenings or super quiet mornings that there's just no wind no nothing except for the sound of maybe a cricket every now and then they will pick you out because their ears can actually judge when the sound hit that left ear before it hit the right ear they can pinpoint exactly where that noise came from and they will look right at you and bust you but I'm the asshole <laughs> yeah okay Sure would be nice to hear a big old moose. Whoa! You made it this far? Might be a bear. Let's go glass for him on the edge of this field here. See if we can uh, spot him. Let me try to get three of his tracks though so I can get some kind of circle. Even though I'm not after bear. I am in a bear competition right now, so, oh, it's with crossbow, actually, yeah, I was going to go do that after I uh, made this episode, even though it, we're not getting, I got one moose, ain't getting crap, let me eyeball out there real fast, see if I can't spot that bear. tell you them rocks every now and then they can look like animals pretty good yeah he's pretty good distance what do I do I don't think I'm gonna chase him out this way he might be on here I think I'm still gonna head out this way Crest this hill over here and glass for some moose. If I don't see nothing, I might end this uh, episode here. We talked a lot about a few things, so I don't even know how long this is. I think I've been. Uh, I think this might be a hour video. Looks like. Yeah, kind of wanted to uh, dedicate this video to that renegade told him uh, he, he said his favorite in this game is uh eh, it looked like I could cross right there what's going on it looks like rocks but um he said his favorite in this game is uh the nine o'clock moose and he loves the long ones so um as moose hunting not nine o'clock moose moose hunting so I thought I'd uh I told him I'd do this video and uh, give him a shout out and since he was the uh reason for the topic today which was a great topic you know uh, compound or recurve um, there's just so many factors into it uh, hopefully I touch base on enough of them um, for my opinion you know anybody can have their own you know oh you should start out with recurve you know you might have your own reasons or whatnot but um, just was talking about how I felt about it I would go with a compound if, if possible uh, any chance you get if you can get up into trees start off with a compound bow uh, honestly um, you're gonna sh you're gonna learn to shoot better uh, make uh, you know more accurate 
ethical kills because just to bring that up real fast um, tracking deer is not easy unless you hit them in them double lungs or that heart anything else besides that is oh man it takes work it really does um, and it takes time it takes experience uh, you're gonna lose animal it's gonna happen you start bow hunting just as sure as one day you're gonna miss just as sure as one day your animal is gonna become coyote feed crow, crow feed because you wasn't able to find that animal um, but other than that they'll surprise the shit out of you my old man never happened to me but my old man has cleaned a deer with a broadhead stuck in the rib cage on the inside of the other shoulder the deer still had the uh, scar the arrow ended up breaking off and uh, and he found it didn't know when that deer was shot before or you know how it happened or why he even didn't die but it happened and the deer had no ill effect when he saw that deer it wasn't limping it wasn't uh, wasn't looked like it was favor in the side or anything like that um, almost to no effect uh, at one point I mean must have just missed some vitals and things of that nature but it's gonna happen you hate it when it does obviously but you know and like I said bow hunting gets boring it really does sometimes you're just not seeing anything you're just sitting out in the woods yeah the squirrels are no longer entertaining <laughs> you know the uh, the birds you know start getting a little annoying because you haven't seen no animals you're getting frustrated uh, you know but when it happens man and, you, and that's the only way it's gonna happen is putting time uh, in tree stands and when you put time in tree stands you know luckily you know or hopefully you you picked areas that you know you know animals are traveling through and uh, things of that nature or but uh, yeah it's better than any drug that I've ever uh, tried and believe it or not ladies and gentlemen I've pretty much almost tried them all as long as it wasn't banging it in my arm with a needle it's about the only thing I haven't tried so and I've never got no rush like uh, what it's like when that buck comes underneath my tree stand or comes by me and uh, that feeling there alone is worth all the boring hours in the tree stand that I've ever spent so well on that note just sounds like uh, maybe I'll start up another one I'll do a little bit more walking around here um, another bear track here but uh, maybe I'll start it up and then kinda converge the two videos together if I start getting some more action but it does kinda seem like things are a little slow right now I got a cow moose over that way that I'm not too interested in so oh what do we got here ladies and gentlemen we got something across there if that's a buck nope that'll be a doe I love this area too by the way um pretty cool the way you know all these water travel ways uh, open edges that you can kind of glass I know that m female moose around here somewhere I don't want to get trampled by her so but yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the topics and uh, my rants about dumb uh, anti hunters and how about that piebald buck that we got at the beginning huh that was pretty awesome so I'd have to call this a successful episode alright guys thanks for watching and uh, remember knock them down drag them out and keep those arrows bloody fellas see you later